So I had asked you to uh, modify this Conway's Game of Life um, with a, uh, a small aspect that reports on occurrences of uh, function calls, um, of method calls. Um, can anyone tell me, I mean, you should have watched the uh, videos, at least one of the videos by today. Um, uh, here I'm asking you to put together an aspect. What is an aspect? Okay, it's, it's associated with injection of code. You can inject it into a code base either in source form or in fact in bytecode form. You don't actually have to have access to the source code to inject it. But there's something that conceptually aspects try to, try to address. What is it? Separation of concerns. Separation of concerns. That there, are, there are means for achieving modularity. There are means for parceling out the functionality associated with a system or the program um, into pieces. And the aspects capture a type of concern. They separate it out from the rest of the program that is not very well dealt with by, by uh, traditional classes or traditional use of uh, procedural code, uh, code where we have where we have um, uh, subroutines, procedures, uh, functions that we call. What, what is this sort of type of thing that it separates out which is uh, so unique? Cross it's cross-cutting functionality. Give me a couple examples of cross-cutting functionality. Logging, security. Sorry? Logging, security. The logging, security issues. There might be an aspect that covers multiple functions at once. Yeah, okay, so it, it might, uh, it, it'll, it'll weave its functionality into a set of different functions. So if you, for example, like yeah. you call a database, yeah. multiple functions, yeah. you can monitor all the calls That's right. a single central. Function. That's right, so um, certain uh, interfaces with persistence um, with, with databases, for example, and you can, you can put in place the mechanisms for transaction handling at many places within your code, display updates, a logging. Um, these are these are issues which often um, it, th you face them not just in one point in your code, but across the entire code base. Um, no, why? So, okay, fair enough. Why not just insert function calls uh, at those places to the to the requisite functionality? Um, so, if we have this cross-cutting functionality all throughout our program, why not just call off to the required uh, methods uh, to do that. It's not centralized, it's hard to manage. It's not centralized, it's hard to manage. Uh, okay, so, so um, both of those are true, but I, I'd like to make it even more crisp. What is it that's not centralized about it? What is it that it's, in what sense is it not managed? Okay, it's okay. Uh, so it's hard, harder to improve it. Um, um, I would say, well, okay, maybe we can just take that function call that's being called and add some functionality to it. So we could add something there, but there is something to that. Well, one of the things is that these these places that exhibit this aspect. Um, Maybe it's transaction logic. Maybe it's logging. Um, maybe it's uh, security related things. There's often some rule that's implicitly behind the scenes about where those things need to go. They need to go in places where these things are being done. Maybe it's every time you open a database connection, you need to have a log message associated with it. Or maybe every time there's an update you know, to this aspect of the data structures, there needs to be a display update. Um, every time, you know, this thing is, is, is done, there needs to, this type of thing is done, there needs to be a transaction, um, a transaction that's wrapped around it um, so that you can encapsulate it in a transaction so it's atomic, either it all takes place, it's as if it all takes place or nothing at all and you can't see it in the middle of it in some inconsistent state. Um, 
there's, there's typically a logic for where those things are taking place and, and why they take place there that's, that's not obvious because they're scattered. They're scattered in all these different places and, and there might not seem to be rhyme or reason for it. You might add one of those places but you forget to add in a call to this thing. You forget to put in a, a call to update you know, the display here or you forget to put in a transaction around this thing because it depends on programmer convention. It depends on programmer um, knowledge. With an aspect, we can put in place um, not just, not, we can not only just put this, the code in place in, in one location, but we can weave it in according to some abstractly defined rules. We say wherever this occurs, weave in this sort of code. Um, wherever we see this pattern or that pattern, put in this sort of code or that sort of code. Um, and that means if your code base is, is expanding over time, if you're adding to your code base, you don't have to depend on the vagaries of your memory that, oh, I need to add this thing in, that's that's our rule, you know, whenever we do this, we have to have a transaction around it. Instead, it could be automatically woven into it. Woven in, in a way that's, that's automatic. Um, and at the same time, in a way that lets you see your code, the underlying code, without the need, without the requirement of, of seeing the clutter involved with the aspect. The aspect is off there, it's doing its job, you can go look at it if you want to, but otherwise you could focus on the underlying code. That's much of the idea here. Now, if I had this, if I, um, you know, if I were teaching a two semester course on this, um, if suddenly you learned that this course does not end <laughs> on Thursday, that this course continues, you know, the horror continues through the summer, right? Um, that every day you're going to be, you're going to come back here. In fact, it's going to pick up. It's going to be every single day, three hours a day. Um, and uh, you know, if for the one or two people who would still continue to come, um, you know, I would present, uh, I would present how aspects can be captured beautifully with um, with uh, functional mechanisms as well, and you could actually capture this sort of logic uh, in a very crisp way, not only with aspects, that's one way to deal with it, that has its own, its own uh, virtues to recommend it, but you can also capture it uh, using uh, functional methods, um, and, uh, and we'd also go uh, greater detail into uh, monadic, uh, monadic composition. But um, uh, don't worry, that was just a nightmare, it wasn't reality. Um, and so th this class doesn't continue. This class ends. And, uh, and uh, you know, whether you approach that with a, a heart of, a heavy heart or a heart of delight, um, the fact is you should be aware that these mechanisms can be, uh, can be captured also in functional ways in a, in a clean fashion. Um, uh, okay, um, so, uh, in this particular case, that's the view from 30,000 feet. In this particular case, I've asked you to put together a first aspect. And if you struggled with it and came up short, I will give you, before the sun sets, a, 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 an example solution. In fact, I'll, I'll show it to you in just a moment here. Um, and what I'm asking you to do here is to report on occurrences of function calls and returns, returns from those calls. So method calls is what we're focused on. In order to weave this aspect in, we'll use the aspect J compiler, which compiles this aspect. Um, and uh, it's going to, to do so together with uh, Conway's Game of Life. And then we're actually going to run using aspect J uh, with the Java runtime, the uh, Java virtual machine runtime form will run Conway's Game of Life, okay? Um, now, an important feature uh, to realize here is that 
Um, you can actually run aspects with the standard Java command line with appropriate with appropriate um, uh, command line options um, for it. Um, but here we're we're using AJ so that it, it sort of knows how to use um, aspects uh, right away. Um, and the AJC compiler behind the scenes, I believe it uses the Java C, the Java compiler, to do a bunch of work. But it basically desugars this aspect code into into Java code. Um, uh, that's that's my understanding how that works. It's possible it compiles it compiles it directly to to bytecode uh, without calling Java C. Okay, so this is um, the aspect J compiler. Um, so. Uh, how are we going to go and create um, uh, occurrences? Um, how are we going to create an aspect that captures occurrences of function calls? What do we need to specify to aspect J that will let it sort of match all function calls? That will help 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 it sort of spot function calls. What do we need to give it? How do we specify where we want it to weave things in? We specify it using a what? Point cut. A point cut. A point cut. Um, okay. Um, and uh, this uh, point cut delineates something called join points. Okay. It delineates a set of, of join points. So. It delineates these places in the code that are that are particularly noteworthy places. The places associated with calls and returns, yes, but also associated with things like um, the creation of an object, of a new object, sort of allocation of that object. Um, and uh, in these join points um, exist in your program, whether or not you think about them or not, but Within an aspect, we can use a sort of wildcard notation, um, a pattern matching sort of syntax to delineate a set of <coughs> these join points using what's called a point cut. And here we have a declaration of a point cut that's called any method call. And um, I would note that the call to the method is viewed as different from the entry to the method. That's a different drawing point. Here we're, we're getting calls to the method. And what's the, what are these stars doing here? Can anyone recognize what are these stars? Wild cards. Yeah, yeah these are wild cards. And what are they, what's the first of the stars indicating? Return type. Return type. The next one? Dispatch. Yeah, so the, the class over which it's, it's dispatching. And then the last one here? Function. Yeah, the, the name of the function. And what are these two dots? The parameter list. Yeah, the parameter list. So, so here we've we've given a very a very uh, um, sort of uh, broad a broad uh, sphere of, of function calls that it captures, uh, method calls. But you know we could be much more specific. We could find things, for example, that only return void. Right? Um, we could find things that, find functions that take in arguments uh, that are, you know, the first one is an int and the second one is a double, um, uh, for example. Um, so here we're saying wherever we call off to one of these methods, but then I have an additional clause here. And it's a clause um, um, of great significance. And, and uh, what is that clause accomplishing? Avoiding stack overflows. Avoiding stack overflows. And uh, why might there be a stack overflow? Because before is a function. Yeah, exactly. So, so there, there are cases where we might start intercepting here um, calls that are occurring within this aspect itself. We want to capture, we want to weave this into our code base. And we can actually do so at runtime. We don't have to actually have to do this, excuse me, we can do so at load time when a, when a Java code is started up. Um, we'd like to weave this in, and we'd like it to capture things in the program into which we're weaving it 
and not capture things going on within our aspect itself. So basically I say, okay, look, if there's a call that's not within our, ourselves, then I'd like to do this. Because after all, we could be capturing, you know, keep on capturing this println, for example, and, and we'll have a stack overflow because we are calling off to this before and before and before, and it's, it's turtles all the way down until the stack overflow, so to speak. It's, um, it's, it keeps on recursing down until the stack can't take it because it's capturing itself. It's biting its own tail in a most painful way, okay? So fortunately, we have a clause here that prevents it from doing that, okay? We have a clause that, that stops it from, um, uh, from, from capturing itself, right? Um, uh, this clause, uh, if you're working with aspects, is, it, that clause is as good as Santa Claus, okay? Um, um, okay, um, maybe there would only be one person if this class continues. Yes, Chris. Sorry, is this code available somewhere? Or will it be yes, I'm going to post it. Yeah, awesome. I'll, I'll post it forthwith. Um, okay, um, so, so here we have two, within this aspect, we have this point cut, and then we have two what here. What are these things? Their advice or advices. I, I, I stand uncomfortably um, saying either one of those. I don't know what's the proper plural. Um, um, so uh, before and after, and what are these? What are these before and after? Okay, so one part of this is pretty clear. They refer to any method call, right? Any method call. Um, what what is this any method call? We defined it. Yeah, this is the point cut, right? So they're associated with the point cut, and they're either occurring before that point cut or after that point cut. And in fact, we have other choices besides that. Give me another choice besides that of which we can avail ourselves. Around, Around it. We can, actually, we can actually wrap the call to this thing, and we can wrap our advice around it, and we could, in fact, not call it. Think about that. You're about to call off to foo, and you say, nah, you don't want to call foo. You actually want to call bar. Don't forget about that foo. Bar is, bar is the one you want to call. And we could, in fact, intercept with that. Um, if that sounds powerful, it is. If it sounds dangerous, it is. Um, OK. So we have before and after. Um, and these occur at points before and after the method call. And here, um, we are intercepting it just prior to the call. And we're printing out some information. After, we're, we're intercepting it just after it's returned. This is actually a misnomer. And I will try to, I will aspire to correct this before, before, you, before I give this to you. This should really say after returned from. There's a separate point cut associated with returning. Like, I'm, I'm inside the method and I'm about to return versus, oh, you've just gotten back from it. This is you've just gotten back from the call, okay? There's another one while you're inside the call, I'm about to return. Okay, um, one way to think about it, is the activation record for that call still on the stack? Um, and here it's no, it's been, you know, foo has called bar and bar has returned and now we're back in foo, but before we go and do anything else, we're having aspects, uh, this after call. Okay. Okay, now, within this code, there's some other stuff that's good stuff for you. Um, so, there's a construct that, I promise I didn't put its name in myself, but um, this is its name. This join point static part. Okay, um, and this join point static part provides you a way of understanding contextual information about where this code is woven in. Um, uh, and, and so this before is occurring in the context of a point cut call. And that call is occurring in some context, right? We're inside. We're calling off to bar, but we're inside foo. Mm -hmm. 
and Fu is in class C. Okay. Um, so here we can actually go and retrieve information uh, about um, about what we're what we're calling and and in fact something about our context. Um, so here we are actually getting at this join point the signature of the function we're calling and we're finding out what class that function we're calling is in and we're finding out something about the signature um, from the signature we're getting the name of the thing that we're calling and then we're reporting that I'm calling such and such okay and uh, when I return I'm doing the same sort of thing so this join point static part provides us with a way of getting information about where we're all where we are and um, sort of what we're doing and uh, in what uh, in what context we're located and for your assignment you'll be able to make use of this information as well okay um, so so this allows us to kind of report um, uh, report something about where we are that goes beyond what you could deduce directly from the point cut this point cut is going to match match a huge number of different types of calls and this will let you zero in on information about this particular call that we're calling off to bar we're calling off to bar maybe we're calling off to bar from many different locations in the code and and uh, for each of those it's still going to say you're you're calling off to bar so this join point static part is giving us some extra information okay and that's in these advice and these advice this code and this advice is woven in to the underlying code um, so that you can capture calls and call off to it. Now, harking back to my comments from 30,000 feet, um, could you do this uh, manually by putting in uh, print, print statements into your program? Yeah, yeah you could. It yeah. also allows you to easily um, have like a switch for debug. But yes. You just run the program normally and it wouldn't print out. Exactly. You don't have to go through and manually litter your code. You don't have to remember manually, you know, remember I've got to insert one of these that's our convention. But but also per the centralization comment, um, this allows you to just have a switch here and turn it on and off. Say, okay, should I turn this on? Should I turn it off? And it's all in the logic of where to weave it in. Any place that we have this is very clear. Maybe you only want to do this for calls that return void, because those are typically calls that do something. They, they undertake some state change. They update some data structures. They change, they send off a message, or they update a screen. They have some action beyond just computing a value and returning it. They, they undertake some, some, some change to the program state. Maybe you, you want to do this only for void, in which case you put in void, and then you know every time I have a void method, you know, these things will be printed out or this information will be collected, etc. Time was, the time was almost your time, that we use this to build a profiler. Mm -hmm. we, we, we wove this code in in a way to record you know, how long you spent in this method call or that method call. And I had students do this as part of their final assignment. But I didn't have the heart this, this semester because you have enough to do for your final assignment. So I, I, I excised it and I asked you to undertake less, less uh, challenging sorts of assignments. Another case we, we, we used to do with this is um, keep track of memory allocation where memory is being allocated. And, uh, and you could keep track of it by where in the program or what have you, how much, um, uh, which was um, also more challenging, um, but uh, more, more time consuming. So I will distribute this aspect and uh, you will be able to, um, um, to make use of it as reference for your assignment, okay? And if you do not see it by tonight, uh, poke me mercilessly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Just yeah. Don't do it with a bot, but you can write me manually. Okay. Um, okay. 
So uh, any questions about that? Hmm? Okay. Going, going, gone. Okay. 